that we have three bar magnets A, B, and C. B is on top of a coil of wire. C is on top of a coil of wire with a gap in it. When I release these from rest, from the same height, which one is going to hit the ground first? Okay, A is very straightforward. When I release it, it's going to accelerate at minus 9.81 meters per second squared. We're ignoring air resistance, so it's going to hit the ground first. The magnet B is going to be a bit more complicated. As it approaches the coil, there's going to be an increase in magnetic flux linkage through the coil. And so this is going to induce an EMF inside the coil. And that's Faraday's law. But then we have Lenz's law, which tells us that the EMF induced inside the coil is going to try to oppose the increase in flux. Okay, so that means it's going to produce a current. And that current is going to produce its own magnetic field around the coil, which is actually in the opposite direction. And the total effect of this is that the magnet has experienced the magnetic force upwards and the coil actually experienced the equal and opposite force downwards according to Newton's third law. Okay, so the net effect of this is that the top of the coil is acting almost, almost like a north pole and this is trying to repel the magnet. Now weight of the magnet is still bigger so it's still going to go downward but the acceleration downward is no longer minus 9.81, it's going to be less. Okay, once it goes through now the flux is decreasing because the magnetic flux linkage is decreasing there's going to be emf induced and this time the emf induced is going to try to oppose the decrease in flux so the current is now actually flowing in the opposite direction and that produces its own field like so trying to almost recreate the field that it's losing and the net effect of this will be to actually attract the magnet back up so we have to always think of the coil as something that hates change it before it didn't like the increase in flux now it doesn't like the decrease in flux so this current that's flowing is actually producing a magnetic field and is the coil of uh, wire is acting like a magnet now with the north pole at the bottom trying to attract the magnet back up the magnet will still accelerate downwards but again not a minus minus 9.81 but less okay, finally we have magnet c as you release this magnet there is going to be an increase in flux so an emf will be induced inside this coil However, we can't have a complete loop of current flowing around. So it can't produce its own magnetic field uh, to try to repel the magnet. So this one is going to hit the ground at the same time as A because there's no force on it except weight. The same magnet and coil of wire except now I've linked it up to a data logger which is going to record the EMF induced inside the coil. I'm going to release it and it's going to accelerate downwards. It's going to go through the coil like so and I'm interested in the EMF against time graph like so. But before I do that, I'm going to plot the magnetic flux linkage against time. So obviously, as the magnet approaches the coil, the magnetic flux increases, and then it peaks off, and then it decreases. But notice how the decrease in flux is quicker. That's because the magnet has been accelerating. So it enters at a lower speed, and then because it speeds up by the time it's leaving, um, even despite the repulsive force, it's still going to speed up and leave faster because of weight. Um, the decrease in magnetic flux linkage is quicker, it's a higher rate. To figure out the induced EMF, I'm going to look, use Faraday's law. Faraday's law tells us that the EMF induced is direct proportional to the rate of change in magnetic flux linkage. So basically how quickly the magnetic flux linkage changes tells us the EMF induced. So that means I need to look at the gradient of the top graph in order to figure out the EMF. So let's draw these mini tangents like so. So you can see initially the, there's an increase in magnetic flux linkage, so there's going to be an EMF induced like so, and it's getting steeper there. And then at the very top, it levels off, so there's a zero gradient over there. So that's when the EMF induced decreases to zero. And then after that, it's a very sharp decrease in magnetic flux linkage. And because it's a very steep negative gradient, we're going to have a very large EMF induced in the negative direction, like so. So notice how the, uh, the reading in the negative value is larger than in the, neg uh, the positive EMF induced. Okay, so let me summarize the details of this graph. So it's accelerated through. So there was an increase in magnetic flux uh, as the coil went through. So because of that rate of change of flux, there's an EMF induced. That's why we've got a positive reading over here um, because the current was induced and is in a direction which opposed the magnetic flux. But let's just say that was a positive initially. Okay, once it's leaving, because it's accelerated, it's going to be leaving faster. So we get a rate, larger rate of change of flux as it leaves. Um, so there's going to be a larger EMF induced as it leaves. So that's why we have a larger negative value at the bottom. So for example, if the top one was 5 volts, we'd have negative 5 volts at the bottom because it's leaving more quickly and the flux changes more quickly. And then finally, when the magnet leaves, 
because of the decrease in flux and the coil is going to try to oppose that change in uh, flux before it initially was trying to oppose the increase in flux now it's trying to oppose the decrease in flux that's why we had a positive reading initially and then now we've got a negative reading